Thank you, Geetha. You were so friendly and full of cheers outside. I thought your optimistic view was going to come from my right. But alas, not. But perhaps truth is more important than optimism. Um, next, uh, we have uh, Justice Retired, just, Justice uh, Zak Yaku. You can remain seated. We've all been speaking from our, from our seating position, Zak. Zak, of course, is one of the most stunning jurors that we've had. A long history in the ANC underground. He's done his bit defending uh, also um, a lot of the political prisoners over the years. Very well known uh, in many different roles as a teacher in Australia, America, here in South Africa. And then his own contribution to our jurisprudence is very wide, <laughs> in particular in relation to socioeconomic rights. Some of you might know him in the news cycle as one of those calling for Jacob Zuma to fall at the moment. I don't know if something like that will come up tonight again. But a very important and a very thoughtful South African. And what I love about Zak is that he doesn't just um, observe what's going on in society. He's one of those folks who are very reflexive about his own journey when it comes to dealing with a lot of these hard moral questions that we are facing. Uh, can we please welcome uh, retired Justice Zak Yaku. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm going to narrow the focus from the broad constitution itself to the Bill of Rights. Our constitution has many sections in it dealing with all kinds of things. But we are here concerned with those aspects of our constitution which are concerned with our value system. How parliamentarians vote and uh, how the electoral commission conducts itself and so on. There are chapters and chapters which we'll have little to do with. But our Bill of Rights has in it a value system which gives our democracy a content beyond the need for us to vote every 12 months. And that Bill of Rights is not based on the value of freedom alone. Indeed, freedom as a value by itself is quite dangerous because absolute freedom at the expense of equality and dignity is a recipe for human disaster. So our Constitution is based on, the, on creating a society based on dignity, equality, and freedom. And it does not aim to do so by changing the whole fabric of our society. The negotiating process at the time was such that both parties could not get precisely what they wanted. Both sides fought very hard, and we have this constitution which we have to live with. And the object of the exercise, and some will say it's gone too far and credited to white people, my sense is that it's went as far as it could possibly go at the time. And that it was uh, a compromise which was appropriate for the time. I would have been happier if it was better, but it could not be, and that's where we live. So first we have the dignity of, uh, we have the principles of dignity, equality, and, and freedom. We have the principles of our democracy. We have the principle of openness, transparency, and we have a bill of rights which guarantees, and I want to clarify that in a minute, a whole range of things, it, it, it guarantees, it, 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 it is written as if the rights promised in the Constitution are already here. And that's what gives rise to some of the complications, but I want to say it's the only positive way to draft the Constitution. But our rights are not all here. Before, and we knew they were not there, and we all know that they were not there. We all knew that the production of a piece of paper does not produce a new society. It requires something more. So I want to start before focusing on the negative by saying that I find today South Africa very, very different from post-apartheid South Africa. It's a much, much, much better country to live in. I'm telling you that the apartheid people were much worse than this ANC government. I've had experience with them both. And they were horrendous. Their immorality, their violence, their inequality, their own sense of their own corruption was absolutely speechless. The ANC is a million times better than the nationalist government could ever be. <laughs> However bad you might think it is, the National Party were rogues of the highest order at every possible level, inhumane, uncaring, racist, sexist, dominant, everything that they should not be, and they were more part of the 
international capitalist system and is unfairness than the ANC is at the moment. So let's not get away from that. Apartheid was an absolute misery. It was a fight worth having. People in exile at that time did not live luxurious lives. They had a very difficult time being with them. So we've had this struggle which the outside and the inside have participated in. We have the constitution. What we have today is a society which feels different, which is wonderful. It's a society in which there are more and more African people who take part in it. We, have, we are together, many of us. We do many things together. In the old days, you go to a hotel, you find everybody that, uh, that speaks to you at the front desk and so on and so on are, are white people. You go to the airport, everybody is white. The name of every pilot is white. Most doctors were white. You go to, uh, 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 on the aeroplane itself, the crew uh, would be all white. Now, my heart feels very thrilled when I go to an airport and I see all African people, mainly, serving me and doing a very good job of it. I see African air hostesses. I see African people at hotels. I see African people occupying our, our town. When I walk in the streets, I brush past the people and I feel part of them. It's a wonderful thing which would never, never have happened to me before. And then in those days, in the radio stations, the only whites used to speak there. And only white people used to phone in. I don't know about the African stations because I didn't listen to them. Now, we have people like Eusebius. Eusebius, before 1994, would have been dead. <laughs> he is now here. We have many African people, many African commentators on the radio, many African opinion makers, many African writers. They're able to express themselves now. And I find all this, and a number of African people who phone in, who say, who, who make thoughtful comments, which are clear and straightforward, which we have never heard before 1994, makes me know that we are at difficult times at the moment, but we are in the throes of building a new country and building it properly. And now I agree that our constitution didn't create the kind of society which some might want where you have had an equal division of wealth. But, there's an affirmative action provision in our constitution which has been used to ensure that more and more uh, people not of, 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 of color have gotten jobs. Uh, and, and, and we know that and we see it every day. Of course, there are, there are troubles at that level. We have a fair labor practice provision in our constitution which tries to effect a more appropriate balance between capital and labor, which has given trade unions the right to strike and so on. Of course, the Marikanas of this world take away from that because society is not equal, but the position is that we do have a fair labor practice provision in our constitution. We do have property reconstruction in terms of which many, many communities have got properties. We've got a long way to go, but we do have, so our society and our constitution contemplates affirmative action, contemplates restitution of property, contemplates fair labor practice, and contemplate the state doing all it can to improve and to make provision for certain social and economic rights. And my sense is that in relation to all these things, except for education and health, the housing provision has improved considerably, and we must not say no to that. The, 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 the position of the workers in South Africa today is much better than it was under apartheid. Make no mistake about it. Uh, so I think that there has been progress, but there is a problem. The problem is that all of us have not studied, interpreted, and internalized the Bill of Rights. The problem is that 95% of men, in their heart of hearts, they may make all sorts of noises, but in their heart of hearts, live their wide lives in a way where women are unequal. Indeed, the position is such that 90% of women also believe that they are inferior to men. 90% of people of all races think that their race is superior and the other people are worse. So we've got 99% of our people that I've met think that gay and lesbian people live in sin. So there's a huge disconnect between the values of our constitution and us. There's a big difference, but there is a huge disconnect. So what, is the constitution worth nothing then? 
And I've always said, and I repeat, that the Constitution places on all of us the duty. Firstly, to internalize and embrace and learn the values of the Constitution ourselves. Secondly, to understand that court orders won't cut it. We must try and persuade more and more people to live the values of the Constitution. We must start a social revolution so that we begin to change our minds and our hearts and start thinking of lives differently. And until we have that social revolution, we're not going to get anywhere. Make no mistake, corruption is miserable. Our constitution in its essence is anti-corruption. Our leadership today, many of them are acting absolutely miserably. The dishonesty is something which is horrendous. Our health and education system is, is in an absolute mess. All these things are there. But I think we must all evaluate things properly and we need to galvanize ourselves because I was a racist and a sexist once. I promise you that if all of you exercise your minds and hearts carefully, you may find some problems deep down there which are lingering, where you feel that you are slightly superior, you know, to someone with another religion, yeah. someone who has a different sex, or you think you're a little morally better off than the guys who are gay and lesbian and so on. So the first thing is, it starts with all of us here. Let us think, let us embrace those values, and let us start the social revolution, so that if in the next 10 years we gather together, and we say, if my 90% has fallen to 85%, and my 95% has fallen to 90%, which have done wonderfully well. It's a long, hard grind. It is our duty. Let us embrace the future, and let us do it. Thank you very much.